Let's say you're driving your car at uh, about 70 miles per hour, and let's see if we can figure out how much kinetic energy is in that car. So V of 70 miles per hour, we know that that is roughly 35 meters per second. Okay, it's not exactly, but it's pretty close. So let's just use 35 meters per second. And the mass of a car is uh, about 2,000 kilograms. Okay, and let's ask the following question. What is the kinetic energy? Okay, so we need to go back to our formula for kinetic energy. We know that kinetic energy depends on the mass, but also on the speed. And in fact, it is just that, one half mv squared. Okay, do we have everything we need? It looks like it, right? We've got m, which we said was 2,000. We've got V, which we just said was 35 meters per second. All of this is SI units, so we don't have to keep writing our units down over and over again. And what do we get if we multiply this out? Well, half times 2,000 is 1,000. And then we have 3.5 times 10 to the 1, quantity squared. You can punch this into your calculator. I'm going to say this has got to be roughly what? 1,000 is 10 to the 3. 3.5 squared, that's got to be pretty close to 10, probably a little bit bigger, let's say 12. And then 10 to the 1, when we square that, that becomes 10 to the 2. So I'm going to say this is approximately 1.2 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 joules. And just to be exact, let's punch it into our calculator and see what we get. So we've got a thousand times 35 squared. And here I get 1.225. So that's 1.23 times 10 to the six joules. Okay. A lot of energy in a car moving that fast. Now, let's ask a follow-up question. Let's say that we're going to drop the car from some height straight down such that we want the gravitational potential energy, mgh, to be exactly equal to that. Let's see what that height would correspond to. Okay, so we're going to take our poor little car and we're going to drop it off a cliff from height h. And when it hits the bottom, we want it to have the same amount of kinetic energy. Okay, so this is a conservation of energy problem, right? We have energy initial has to equal energy final. Initially, it's at rest up there. So it's all gravitational potential energy. Finally, at the bottom, it is all kinetic energy. And now here's something really interesting that happens. I have M on the left side. I have M on the right side. Those cancel out. And so I can solve this for H. I get H is equal to V squared over 2G. And now I have all those numbers, right? V was 35 squared 2 times 9.8. Let's approximate that here. We know what 35 squared is now. It is 1.23 times 10 to the 2. Okay, so that is, uh, sorry, 1.23 times 10 to the 3. Right, that's what that number is right there. And then we're dividing by 2 times 9.8, which is 19.6. What does this work out to be? Well, that's 1 over 20, roughly. Uh, a little bit more, so we're going to say 0.06. Uh, 
and then we have a times 10 to the 3. So I'm going to say that that is 60 meters. And let's just punch it into our calculator, calculator to double check. 35 squared divided by 2 divided by 9.8 equals 62.5. Okay, so I'll put that right here. 62.5 meters. So our guess was pretty good. Okay. To get an energy of 1.23 times 10 to the 6 joules, you drop your car from 60 meters, and that would do it. But 60 meters, that's pretty high. That's 180 feet, right? So, a lot of energy in a moving vehicle. All right, hopefully that's clear. Cheers.